So if you're just starting with Octane, there are seven essential tips that everyone should know, and here they are. If you don't have an RTX card, then I recommend getting one. And if you do have one, one of the most important things you need to do is make sure that RTX is enabled in Octane. To make sure that RTX is working, go to Device Preferences and make sure that the Use RTX Acceleration checkmark is set. Here I'm comparing RTX on versus RTX off on a scene with 1000 samples with no textures. Denoiser is a great tool, but we don't want to have it on all the time, simply because when you have it on, the viewport response suffers. So you can see that with the denoiser enabled, the viewport response is choppier. And when I disable the denoiser, you can tell from the viewport that the response is a lot better. So that means we should only need denoiser right when we're about to tweak the settings for final render. If you're using Blender, you probably know how to set up your materials in cycles. And you probably have a lot of assets with materials set up in cycles. Therefore, it would be very convenient if we had a button that will convert those cycles materials over to Octane materials. Fortunately, we have that. Now, it's not a silver bullet. You have to keep in mind that it will only work on very basic material structures. That means if you have the albedo, the metallic, the roughness, and the normal, it will convert fine. But if you have to feed it into other nodes, it's not going to work. And you also have to remember to set the gamma correctly after you're done converting it over. It's important to get into the habit of working with low samples first. Then, as you get closer to finalizing your render, increase it. This will ensure that you have a fast workflow as you're setting everything up and discovering and experimenting. And then when you get closer to final, you can turn up the samples to get that extra bit of quality. This is especially important when you have big complex scenes. Adaptive sampling is another tool that's great for improving render time, and therefore, it will speed up our workflow. In this example, I increase the samples to 1,000, and I turn off adaptive sampling. Let's see how long it takes for the viewport to resolve. In this case, it finished in 11 seconds. Now let's turn on adaptive sampling and lower some of the values. With adaptive sampling, we completed the render in six seconds. It's important to know that adaptive sampling does not work so well in dark scenes where we have slow transition from one color to another. In those cases, we need to use a lot more minimal samples. When we use out a core, it means that Octane is now using the system RAM, which is a lot bigger than the VRAM of the GPU, which is a lot smaller. However, the GPU VRAM is a lot faster, and therefore you'll get a lot faster render time if you can keep your memory usage to the GPU. This also means that we have to manage the memory usage of our scene. We have to be careful on the textures we use, especially the sizes, and we need to be careful with our geometry. If we have geometry that's not going to be seen, they should be removed. And we should also use as much instancing as possible. In order to keep track of the memory usage, we have to use the memory statistics that Octane provides us. You can find this at the top of the viewport window. The important things to watch out for is total VRAM usage. The other thing to watch out for is total out-of-core memory usage. 
if you're using just a little bit out of core, you're probably not going to be affected that much. But if you're using a lot more memory out of core, you should start noticing a larger slowdown in render performance. I hope you find this video helpful. And if you did find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.